Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Simpler Living PEI. Sorry, I had a bird just went by the window. Distraction moment. <laughs> anyway, hi. Welcome to our first canning video in Canning 101, the Tammy way. Yeah, okay. I was being a little silly. But um, I just called it the Tammy way because I just, I don't really mess around too much with the recipes. Um, I tend to follow the instructions pretty close to the letter usually but um yeah we are making jam today so we are making a four berry jam blackberry raspberry blueberry and strawberry now the strawberries i have are frozen um whole strawberries because i couldn't find any sliced which means there's an extra step involved with for me which is once it cooks, basically squishing the whole strawberries against the side of the pot. I'll show you that when we get to the point. And um, yeah, so this is what we're doing today. So the way it's going to work is blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries, they'll just go in the pot, start throw, thawing out. But the blackberries I'm going to be putting through the food mill. But I'm going to try a couple other ways in case you don't have a food mill. Um, and of course, a big batch like this, putting them through a strainer like I'm going to show you. I'm not gonna lie, it's a big pain in the backside. But if you don't have the food mill, don't have access to a food mill, or really don't mind the seeds, don't worry about it. I honestly, I the bigger seeds in the blackberries, I have a hard time with, so here we go. Let's get our first canning adventure together underway and uh, make some jam. All right. Let the jam making begin. The blackberries need to thaw out because we need to get a lot of the seeds out of these. There's tons of seeds. And our big stock pot. We have frozen whole strawberries, blueberries, and frozen raspberries from the garden. So now the strawberries I bought, the blueberries do come from a local farm. I buy a five kilogram box every year and they stay in the freezer. And the blackberries came from our own bushes. So I'm gonna let all this start to thaw out and I'm gonna try and de-seed these guys two different ways, basically the easy ways. So if you wanna try it, you not have to buy a different piece of equipment. Okay, so now I've got the mill, but I wanna see if we can get the seeds out of these blackberries just by doing this. They might be thawed out enough. Let's find out. Hmm, might have to use a spoon. Oh, this might work, guys. This would definitely take more time if you do not have a food mill. I am going to use the food mill for the rest of this, just so you know. But... That's the fine strainer. Let's try the other strainer. Are we getting any seeds through? Let's see. No, look at that. I don't think they're quite thought out enough though. Well, this is the food mill. It's got the three little legs. This is the actual mill itself. And here we go. Now these are not what you'd call ridiculously expensive. I think I paid $20 for this Canadian tire. So, alrighty, let's get this going. Okay, this is heavy. That is our blackberries. Ah. 
So I ended up with about seven cups of blackberry, which is fabulous because that actually works out well. Ooh, Einstein here. So I've got seven cups of blackberries. Let me show you the rest of the pot. So these are on a really, really slow warm up. So a lot of them are still frozen. So what I've got are four cups of raspberries. These raspberries are two cups in a, each in a bag. I have three cups of blueberries and the equivalent of six cups of strawberries. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus seven is 20 cups. That's a lot of fruit. But there is some air spaces and things in here. So the last of the strawberries will go in because I'm gonna be, I think I'm short about a half a cup because of the air spaces. And now, all that fabulous blackberry. I know it seems like a lot to take all the seeds out of blackberries. Uh, the blackberries that we have, they are very, very seedy. So if you're gonna buy blackberries, you wanna make jam, try one. If it's got a lot of seeds in it, you might wanna take them out. The raspberries have a fair amount of seeds. The blueberries have some little ones, right? Because they're local, they're, they're like an, a local organic blueberry. So they don't have all the modifications. And straight up frozen strawberries. The strawberries will break down. The blackberry will. The raspberry and the blueberries will stay semi there. So it's, it's jam because I didn't juice anything, but it's gonna be more like a I don't know, half jam, half jelly by the time it's done, which is okay, because it works great for me. Okay, now it's time for the sugar. So, yeah. Like I said, long cook is essentially equal parts sugar and equal parts fruit. So we have 20 cups of fruit. Just getting the chunks out of this thing of sugar here. I mean, for the life of me right now, I don't remember exactly how much sugar is in a bag. So we'll do it this way. It's nine. Ah! All right. Two full bags of sugar is 18 cups plus a little bit. Okay. Let's go back to the fruit. Now I told you, don't freak out. Here's the first bag. the second. Now, if you want low sugar, sugar-free, there are pectin recipes for jam where you do not have to put anywhere near this kind of sugar. Um, this is going to make a whack ton of jam. This will last us quite a while. But now, it has to start cooking. Now, I still only have this on less than medium when it comes to the temperature, because I don't want to burn the sugar. This will cook for a long time. But now it's time to add the lemon juice. 
Okay, so by the way, I also apparently can't count. <laughs> 20 cups of fruit, 18 cups of sugar is exactly what I needed because for some reason, I was thinking I was making a different kind of jam, which is equal parts. So berries, it's basically five cups of fruit to four cups of sugar. But I will be adding the extra strawberries at the end as well. And for every regular batch, it's two tablespoons of lemon juice. I put a whole quarter cup in a batch this big. Here we go. Give it a good stirry stirry. We got a little bit of juice left in here. Don't waste the blackberry. There we go. Now this will happily cook away for quite literally a couple of hours because I'm using frozen fruit. Well, I hope this doesn't get too steamy for you guys, but all that black, all that blackberry, all that sugar and all those berries have been cooking for not quite an hour. Now I use frozen, so of course the fruit really breaks down. Raspberries are basically non-existent. I'm not gonna lie. And since we actually did the blackberries through the mill, it's um it's a little different but it works the blueberries basically stay whole and we will have some pretty big chunks of strawberry but like i said before we started since i'm using whole strawberries this is gonna it looks a little weird but you basically squish it against the side of the pot okay and that kind of breaks those strawberries down a little bit see take a look so we're gonna let this keep cooking it has about another hour for me because it's all frozen fruit so there's a lot of moisture which is finally cooked out and I'll show you how uh, how you know a long cooked jam is done my candy thermometer bubble is currently at 200 10 12 14 degrees now I'm at sea level well just above which means it's technically just about ready but what we're gonna do is the plate test. So when it's really, really hot, you can see those raspberry seeds, can't you? When it's really, really hot, it is basically liquid, obviously. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and we'll see if it's actually ready to go. Alrighty guys, this is the plate test. So see how it's kind of closing in on itself? It is almost ready. Now where I am, this candy thermometer should come up to 220 degrees. So we're gonna let it go. Now I'll probably do it till about 222 or so. Um, Fred does like it a little bit thicker and so do I. But yeah, and then in a little bit, we're gonna start skimming all this foam off the top. Well, I managed to skim off some of the foam. We are going to do our next fridge test. Let's see how it comes out. Temperature is just shy of, sorry, just a hair over 220. Woohoo! Alrighty. I have got the canner on the stove getting hot. So I put three jugs of water in it because they're gonna submerge this jam. But the jam is ready. I skimmed off as much as I could of the foam. There's still some in there. And now what I forgot was my little spatula to kind of wipe off the bottom of that as I do this. There we go, got it. All right, I forgot to show you, this is the funnel we're using. It actually has headspace marks. So, 
on a jar. The best way to do it is the ring here, the ring on this part right here, this is one inch head space and then it's half inch quarter inch. Now jam, you really only need a half inch head space, but I tend to do between half inch and one inch. That's just me. But let's fill all these up. Now to clean the rings, or the rims I should say, of these jars, because there's a lot of sugar involved, you want vinegar, okay? Now you're not going to put a bunch of vinegar in there, but the vinegar just kind of helps make sure that the sugar doesn't stick on the rim, and then the lid can safely go on. See? I'm going to clean all these up, and we'll get them all lidded up. And of course, typical for me, when I make jam, I got it all over the island. <laughs> so I usually have to do the, a really good scrub on this island when I'm done making jam. So guys, this is where controversy starts. Now the new lids, the blue boxes, there's a different type of seal on them. So, let me get these, let me get these off. Now you just have to really wash them before you use them, whereas the old lids, you needed to actually, oh, that's a bad lid, look at that. You also have to check your lids because you might get a bad one. Now the old lids, you have to actually put them in hot water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up the kettle, get these in some water, give them a quick wash. All right, so you don't have to worry about this stuff getting cold while you're waiting for your lids because jam, it stays hot for a long time. So lid on, give the rings a, just a little turn. Finger tight guys, that is it, okay? Two lids is the price of one. Look at that. There we go. Down to one. So by the way, those Ball and Bernardin kits, this little handy dandy magnet, it comes with them. Now the important part is just finger tight the lids because if you do it really tight, the lids will buckle. So the whole reason for the lids is just to hold that, sorry, the rings, is just to hold that lid down while it's in the canner. That's the only thing that's there for. There we go, let's get these in the canner. So I've mentioned before, I normally use this as a steam canner. Today, we are using it as a water bath. Now the good thing about a water, this using this one as a water bath canner you can actually put more jars in it as a water bath than as a steam bath, mostly because of these cross members that are in there. They kind of get in the way. Alrighty. Now the water's hot enough and the jam's hot enough. You cannot put hot jars in cold water. That is like a recipe for disaster. You end up with a cracked jar, a broken jar, a jar that goes boom, all the fun stuff. All right. Time to fix my jars because you see I did not lift it evenly. There we go. And we go slowly. Now I do not have enough water, so let me fire up the kettle. Okay, so what I should have had was one of these kettles ready to go, but I didn't because I'm a putz, but 
You need to have enough water so it covers all of the jars. And I have one jar that's a little bit taller than the others. There we go. Okay. So now, lid on. Let it come to a boil. And then at my altitude, it has to boil for five minutes before I shut it off. Alrighty, we'll be back. It is the next day and jam making is done. So what we ended up with was 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh my gosh, the brain just shut off. All right, let's count this again. So yesterday we did two batches in the water bath canner of nine jars each. Now, normally when I make jam, it's steam canning. So I do seven jars each. Now this recipe usually gives me 20 jars. So everybody gets steam canned and happy. But in this case, I only had room for 18 jars. So we did 18 jars. We had two casualties. These two did not seal. That's okay. Failures happen. But I think I also know why those two didn't seal, but that was my fault. Now, like I said, normally we would get 20 jars. So what I ended up doing is putting some in the last two of the little freezer jam jars that I have. These things are fabulous. Screw on lids, they go in the freezer. As long as you make sure you leave that little head space for expansion, perfect. These two jars are also gonna go in the freezer. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually freeze a canning jar. Now, before these get frozen, I'm gonna take the lids off, just in case, and then I'll put the lids back on when they get frozen, make those nice and safe. And then we had enough for one great big jar. So this is the one Freddie said, put it in the fridge, he'll use this one up first. When you're done canning, wash your jars, okay? You don't know whether anything's going to come down the sides, you have no idea, right? Clean them off take the rings off. You're going to want to take the rings off of a jar before you store it because if there has been any siphoning, so this is one of, this is the jar that I just filled up. So yes, the jam is good. So if there's any siphoning, basically meaning if the water in your canner is pink, that means that a tiny bit of jam kind of came out from under the lid, but it also can make these stick. And if these stick, that little bit that's around the, around the inside of the ring, it could possibly go bad. If it goes bad or goes rusty, it can actually pry up the actual lid itself. And now you've got a jar of jam that you're not gonna use because now it's gone bad. This, by the way, is that bad lid we found yesterday. See that? Don't throw it out. Just use it for the jar in the fridge. <laughs> but let's get back to the conversation at hand. So with the safe canning, when you do any canning, the recommendation is to leave the jars for 24 hours. Let them settle, let them fully cool. Then you're going to wash them, put them away. One thing you should not do though, do not stack them like that. If you're going to, if you have to stack them, lay a sheet of cardboard on top. I usually keep the boxes and then set the other box on top. So you've got that layer of cardboard. If you're gonna stack them like this, you're creating pressure points. You might actually pop that bottom lid and you basically lost a jar of jam, right? So I don't do fancy labeling unless, uh, unless it's something that needs a little bit more explanation. So I have an Indian chutney. I actually used a label on them that says Indian chutney with the ear. This one, it just says F for fruit and the year, 23. This jam will be probably gone by the time we have all next year's fruit in the freezer. So, but yeah, that's basically the extent of our canning for jam. Now, long cook, no pectin jam. What we'll do I'll take a look and see, make sure I have enough fruit. But what I can do is I can get some pectin. We can actually go through a pectin jam. It's not something I use a lot, so it'll probably just be a small batch. Go and get some frozen strawberries or something because straight up strawberry jam is always good. And for some reason I can't get strawberries to grow 
on this little homestead. It's driving me mad. <laughs> but like I said, that's the basics on canning jam. If you're gonna do the long cook, there are a couple of tools that I have that you may not have. You may not have a candy thermometer, so the little method on the plate, great way to find out if the jam is ready. But if you do it that way, you also run the risk of cooking it too long, which I have done in the past where it's turned into a block of jam. <laughs> so that block of jam that we've made, I think we finally finished it off because that was my own silly fault. Candy thermometers aren't expensive. If you want to do it and do the right um, temperature of your jam based on your altitude, like for me, I'm technically sea level, so 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And this jam came out perfect. If you want to not use blackberries because of the amount of seeds, don't use blackberries. But if you do want to use blackberries, putting the seeds through a colander or a sieve, like a metal one, works great. Takes more time. Just so you know, does take a lot more time, okay? If you are someone that cans already and maybe you have an old food, food mill that someone had given you, maybe you have one of those cone shape um, applesauce mills with a little wooden thing that you go around in circles. My mother had one of those. That's how we used to make applesauce. I can't find one. I would love to get one. But that food mill, I think it cost me about $25 a Canadian Tire. Now, of course, I'm in Canada, Canadian Tire. You can get them in the U.S. I've seen them when, I, when we used to go across the border. Um, I've seen them in Target. I've seen them in Walmart. I mean, you just have to search for them. The food mill, we use that because we process a lot of tomato sauce. That's the main reason why I bought it. But tomato sauce, we'll do that later on in the year. But, like I said, that's Jam 101 long cook style all right guys so i'm not sure what our canx canning adventure is going to be it might be the potatoes I haven't decided yet we'll stick with some easy things and then we'll go into a few more difficult things and a couple of things like i have never done before like the potatoes and maybe some dried beans thanks for coming out i appreciate every every one of you i'll start that sentence again and uh hit like hit subscribe Hit the notifications button if you want to continue on with us as we do our Canning 101 Tammy style. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.